You really don't remember? When Jack Frost awakens and rises out of the icy lake he was dormant within, he knew very little about who he was. The man in the moon told him his name, and he quickly discovered his magical ice abilities, but who he fundamentally was could not be understood. For hundreds of years, he couldn't recall his purpose and didn't even realize he had a life before being Jack Frost. For some reason, the memories of his prior life, which established who he was, were lost even though all the other guardians' minds remained intact through their transformation. What was so different about Jack's life or evolution that made him forget? Hello, I'm Isaac from Watson Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. I'm focused on spreading magic, and to do that today, we are going to be looking into the backstory of Jack Frost to determine why he didn't have his memories. By the way, this story is going to contain major spoilers ahead for the novel titled Jack Frost The End Becomes the Beginning and the other Guardians of Childhood books. If you'd like to check out these wonderful stories yourself, I have linked them in the description. I am absolutely fascinated by Jack Frost. His life may seem simple, but the deeper you look into it and the more memories that you go into, the deeper his lore actually expands to be. But even though Jack Frost's story was complicated, he was just like every other guardian. Every guardian had a life before they were chosen. Santa Claus was a Russian warrior and adventurer. The Easter Bunny is the last remaining member of an elite and noble civilization called the Pukas. The Tooth Fairy came from a race of women known as the Sisters of Flight, and the Sandman once steered stars across the universe. All these stories I would love to explore at some point, but the point is, Guardians come from somewhere, and their origins are important to who they become. We were all someone before we were chosen. At first in Rise of the Guardians, it may seem that Jack Frost came from a normal life as a human boy, but we learn in the Guardians of Childhood novels and storybooks, the journey to achieve that simple life was long and difficult for he was not born as a boy, but as an entity of the golden age of the universe. Long, long ago, during the time where goodness and magic were everywhere and the man in the moon was born, Jack Frost was created to be one of the most powerful beings in the universe known as a nightlight. And if you'd like to fully understand how he was created and what made him so formidable, I'll leave a link to my video on that topic in the description. As a nightlight, Jack Frost, known as Nightlight at the time, possessed a single oath to protect a prince who you know as the man in the moon. Until the prince reached adulthood. When the prince became an adult and Nightlight's oath had been completed, Nightlight was the first of his kind to evade the Nightlight destiny of becoming a star and instead continued to exist within the universe. For hundreds of years, the never-aging Nightlight traveled on many adventures, met friends like the Guardians of Childhood, and kept back the forces of evil led by the terrible Pitch Black. But eventually, his fate as a Nightlight would be further altered, bringing him closer to the simple life we eventually see him to possess. When Nightlight kissed his Catherine, his best friend and the woman he loved, his life forever changed. Nightlight was magic from the Golden Age, while a kiss is magic derived from mankind. So when the two kissed, those two types of magic mixed and merged to make magic unlike any the universe had ever seen, which altered Nightlight's oath and changed what he was. Their kiss brought Nightlight to swear to dedicate himself to the wonder and goodness he felt for Catherine, making him neither purely of the Golden Age or of mankind, but something else completely. This kiss marked a turning point in Nightlight's life for the ancient wizard Ombrick, known to the world as Father Time, explained the first kiss is the end of childhood and the beginning of the grown-up journey. Nightlight was on a path to a new life, and he discovered what he must become when he dreamed for the first time. When Pitch threatens the man in the moon and the children of Earth with a massive army of nightmares, Nightlight feels he must unlock a power within him no Nightlight had ever experienced before by dreaming. The man in the moon sprinkled dream sand onto his old protector's head to allow him to sleep, causing the creature to radiate light and change. In Nightlight's moon dream, he flew to the stars of his brother Nightlights and told them of his transformative kiss. In response, they instructed him to continue his moon dream and then no longer shine as a star, but instead be a boy on Earth. Then Nightlight discovered in his dream a family he felt drawn to. In his moments examining their cottage and the people within it, he desired to be a child with them, but he couldn't just yet. 
In his moon dream, he also discovered the plan necessary to defeat Pitch. And so, when he awoke, he halted the Boogeyman and his armies and brought the Nightmare King to Earth to be imprisoned. Now that evil had been held back again, and even though he loved Catherine, Nightlight knew it was time to find the family of his dreams his brothers had told him to find. And this is when his memories of his life as a cosmic entity began to fade. I kind of understand what Nightlight is going through. He has this already established life that he was expected to follow, but now he's breaking away from it, and that means that he has to leave some people behind. It's kind of sad, I wish he could have stayed with Catherine, but at the same time, this was something he felt he had to pursue. And if you're going after your dreams, I feel like sometimes that's a necessary choice. If you agree with me, comment a star emoji below that like button. Nightlight was enthralled with the beauty and marvelous nature of the forest he walked through in search of the cottage he saw, while his memories with the guardians drifted away. As he continued to venture deeper into the ancient, dense, and enchanting woods, his powers began to weaken and change, and he hoped that would mean Pitch and his minions would be no longer able to follow him. But he was wrong. On the journey, he was attacked by the Lermontov Serpent, a servant of Pitch, who hunted the most hopeful dreams on Earth. Due to Nightlight's loud and powerful dreams, this serpent had been able to discover the Golden Age entity in the woods. But luckily, Nightlight was able to defend off and defeat the serpent for now. To assist Nightlight on his quest, the leader of that land and the king of the werewolves, Shadowbent, escorted him with a pack of werewolves to the family Nightlight envisioned. As they raced through the trees and terrain, Nightlight felt free and at peace with the wolfmen who accompanied him, and felt like his previous life was getting farther and farther away. Nightlight explains, I became a being of pure action and instinct. I forgot about my past and my future. I forgot about heartbreaks or duty. I thought only of grabbing the next branch ahead of me and keeping up with my friends below." End quote. Nightlight's mind was letting go of the past he'd experienced as a golden age being and was focusing on the new life he would soon create and the person he was becoming. When Nightlight finally arrived at the house he had witnessed within his moon dream, his heart brightened and Shadowbent pointed out the importance of that moment. He stated, Within every boy there is a man, and in every man the memory of a boy. Time to make the memories that will be your compass. End quote. Jack understands the importance of these childhood moments, especially later in his life. These childhood moments would define him. If I find my memories, then I'll know why I'm here. In the next moments, Nightlight moved closer to the house, allowing the past to seemingly vanish behind him, for he believed it was time to be just a boy. He was ready to be as human as possible. No becoming invisible, no tricks, no magic. When the family finally saw him, they rushed him inside, revealing themselves to be the Ardellian family. There was the father and mother, Victor and Irina, respectively, and their two children, Jaklovich and Anna, who were all welcoming and loving towards Nightlight. When they asked his name, though, he did not respond with Nightlight, but with Jack Frost. He was cared for, and in return, he loved them. Jack would play with Anna and Jacklevich, do chores with them, eat with them, tell stories, play, and imagine, allowing him to build a deep, unbreakable friendship with them. There were times Jack would think about the Guardians or his lovely Catherine, but he felt he was where he was meant to be, until it all crumbled. Even though Jack had suppressed his powers and infrequently looked back to his life as Nightlight, the Lemontoff Serpent and Pitch's Shadowmen had found him. While playing on an icy lake beyond the earshot of Anna and Jacklevich's parents, Jack saw the serpent begin to break the ice while the shadow men began to surround them on the edge of the lake underneath the ice and on the surface. As the ice began to shatter underneath their feet, Jack overheard one of the nightmare men state they were present to destroy Anna and Jacklevich while they planned to leave Nightlight alive to punish him for defeating Pitch. The kind and loving family that had taken Jack in were the ones who were going to suffer because of him if he failed to stop the minions, but he wouldn't allow that to happen. Luckily, Jack got his friends off the ice while Shadowbent came to retrieve the children and bring them safely into the woods. Jack summoned the buried powers that began to flood back to him, and using his ice magic, Jack Frost summoned a horde of ice arrows from the broken lake and obliterated the Shadowmen and decimated the evil serpent. Before Jack's friends left though, Jack allowed himself to be clamped by the serpent as it sank into the cold water, and once they were underwater, he ended the evil creature's life. 
Even though Jack was free, he continued to let himself sink into the dark, lonely bottom of the lake, where he would remain dormant away from everything and everyone. He thought no thought, forced himself to stop remembering his life, and even made himself not feel a single emotion. In time, he erased his memory and forgot his whole life. He couldn't remember Pitch, his time as Nightlight, Catherine, or even his family. I wasn't anyone before I was Jack Frost. Jack Frost had become invisible, for he hoped by disconnecting himself from the world, resisting the urge to dream, and by remaining in hiding, Pitch would believe Nightlight was dead, so he would no longer look to harm anyone Jack loved. When Jack finally returned to the world by coming out of the lake that had frozen over, he couldn't remember a life before that moment. He was empty. Why I was there and what I was meant to do, that I've never known. While Jack Frost was created to be a powerful entity known as a nightlight for an age that ended long ago, he defied his prescribed destiny by rejecting his fate to become a star and live by a single oath. In Nightlight's journey of change, he became drawn to the life of a human boy as he dreamed, but as he pursued the family he had envisioned, his memories of his previous life began to drift away. After being taken in by the kind humans, becoming a family member, and taking on the name Jack Frost, he mostly left his other life behind, allowing those memories and powers to remain dormant. When Jack and his family were attacked by minions of evil though, to protect the ones he loved, he came to the conclusion he couldn't simply bury his memories, but he had to erase them so the Nightmare King would believe he had been eradicated. For a hundred years, Jack Frost forced himself to forget everything he knew, so when he awoke once again, all he knew was that he was different, had powers, and had the name Jack Frost. Hello fun people, if you are new to the channel, here's a secret. I am a huge Disney fan, and next week I get to go to Walt Disney World, the most magical place on Earth. If you like to stay up to date with my journey around the parks and what I'll be doing, make sure to check out my Instagram stories at Watso Videos next week. And if you happen to be in the parks, feel free to come and say hi. I'd be ecstatic to meet any of you who enjoy my videos and support my mission of spreading Disney magic. Thank you to my generous and awesome patrons over at Patreon for continuing to support me, and thank you for watching this video. I have a lot more Rise of the Guardian video ideas, so if you'd like to stay up to date with when those are released, make sure to click that subscribe button, and if you'd like to see more Watso videos, then check out some awesome pics over here. Finally, as always, have a magical day.